Hi, I'm John, and this is Up For Excel. I've got here some sales data that I've been given, and it's by quarter, by year. So we've got it out to the end of 2019 at the moment, but we want to forecast 2020. So we've got about 12 numbers. This is pretty much the minimum that you're going to need for this kind of technique of forecasting forward. So what I'm instantly going to do uh, just using shortcut keys here to control shift and the arrow keys to highlight that data. Uh, I'm going to at the moment exclude anything we haven't got sales data for and push Alt F1 to get a very quick chart up on the screen. I'll just move that up there and expand it a bit. This is a visual representation of our chart data. The main thing that I want to do here is add a trend line on this so we can see what things are going. So by right clicking on the actual series, you'll see we get add trend line. Now you can also add it by clicking on the plus button here and you'll see trend line there or add chart element and you've got trend lines here. What we're going to do is going to try and find one that best sort of describes our sales data. Here's a linear one and you could argue that perhaps that's okay, but one of the ways of checking that is that we're going to actually now forecast on this trend line. When you click on the trend line, you'll see over on the right hand side, you've got various options here, the different types of trend line. And here you can see you've got a forecast box. So what we're going to do is forecast forward uh, four periods because that will give us the whole of the next year. As soon as I hit enter on the keyboard there, our chart expands to now include this trend going out. But what I want to quickly do is maybe just click on some different trend lines to see what kind of values that we're going to get. So that is an exponential, that's a linear, logarithmic, polynomial, and you can see straight away there's various options with polynomial, but polynomial that is curving around and a third order polynomial would clearly be quite an ambitious looking forecast to say the least and I think they're only going to get more ambitious whereas a second order one is portraying that our cells have basically peaked and they're going to go back down so I don't like to look at that either so polynomial I say we can we can rule out linear is looking all right exponential we're unlikely to get exponential growth in our sales anyway so I wouldn't want to be using that so logarithmic at the moment is looking pretty good Power is also looking good. Uh, let's just compare that to logarithmic. Yeah, I'd say power is probably slightly flatter, looks probably slightly better. And then moving average, which you can't use to forecast forward, but what you can do is you can use to get an underlying trend. So if you've got a seasonal pattern, for example, you can, moving average will let you wipe out that seasonal pattern. So by picking a four period moving average, what we're doing is taking the average of the previous four quarters and plotting that. So that's going to give us a much smoother line. But again, we can't use it to forecast forward, but it is another type of trend line that you might want to consider adding to your graph to get like a, if you like, a sort of underlying performance line on there. So I'm going to use a power line to forecast forward. Now, I might just want to check it by going perhaps to something like 12 periods forward and saying, does it still look remotely sensible? 12 being three years forward. I compare that to logarithmic. It's, there's very little in it, to be honest. We've eyeballed these uh, trend lines, but I'm now going to display something called the R squared value. Now, I'm going to move that up to the top. I'm going to make it, make it much larger. Now this, if you like, is a measure of how well the trend line fits the existing data. We want the biggest number we can get. And you don't get too hung up on the absolute number here for the purposes of forecasting, because we know we've got seasonality going on here. So we're never going to get anything perfect. So we'll just go back to the types of trend line by clicking on the trend line and just double check. So a linear, that goes down to 25, 0.25 or 0.26, exponential 0.27, logarithmic 33, 28, 37. Actually just eyeballing it and statistically looking at it has given us the exact same result. Power definitely appears to fit the data best and gives us the most sensible forecast. We're definitely going to use power. 